Okay. Show me. Hi there guys, welcome back to the Dutch Sea channel. Thank you very much for tuning in for another part in my freestyler Gap RC quadcopter build. Now I left you in the last part with a quadcopter with motors and ESCs, which yes in this frame they are mounted at the bottom of the arms. I've added some shrink tube around the arms and the ESCs to uh, protect them and uh, keep them from falling off. Okay, so, uh, oh, and I added a Runcam Swift 2 FPV camera. So, what will we be doing in this video? We'll be adding, well, the, the, the guts of the quadcopter. An FC hub from Matec, a 6S, and an F722 STD flight controller. Uh, we'll be taking a, uh, a detailed look at uh, both of these and I'm gonna be installing those. So let's have a look at the Matec FC hub and the F722. Here we go. The Matec is FC hub 6S. What's in the name, right? This is a power distribution board for up to 6S quadcopters. Now I don't know Matexis to uh, overstate their products, so I'd feel completely secure in running a quadcopter with this power distribution board on uh, up to 6S. I won't, I will be running my quadcopter on 4 or 5S, but it's nice to know uh, I've got some, some reserve there. One other thing, this power distribution board has an amp sensor, you can see it over here. That, uh, black slab with silver sides. It can measure up to 184 amps, which is uh, hopefully far more than uh, my quadcopter will run, run its amps up to. But uh, well, again, that's nice. This power distribution board comes with some plastic standoffs and screws. And that is basically all you uh, get with this power distribution board. Now, what does a power distribution board actually do? Well, it kind of provides uh, the entire rest of your quadcopter with current and specific currents that uh, your components might need. Now, obviously, it'll uh, supply your ESCs with power from these corner tabs. And it's uh, obviously nice that those are actually placed at, uh, at the corners. But uh, apart from that, it'll also provide 5 or 10 volts. You see these two blocks of electronics. Uh, this one over here will regulate uh, the input power, so up to 6S, down to 10 volts. And this block over here is square will regulate uh, your input power down to 5 volts. Uh, for instance, your flight controller will uh, probably want uh, 5 volts to run on. Maybe your receiver, well maybe, probably your receiver as well. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what these two blocks do. Now I already told you that this thing over here is your amp sensor. And um, I'm not completely sure what the voltage sensor would be, but this board will also uh, provide information to your flight controller about the current voltage, which is uh, obviously uh, handy to know. Now again, this uh, power distribution board does not come with an XC60 or anything else. Lucky for us, or at least for me, my frame came with this XC60 with wires. So I'll be soldering those up over here. You also see this white ribbon connector over here. The board does not come with a ribbon connector, but the flight controller I'll be using did. Uh, it ain't actually came with two, so I've got one spare. These are the ribbon cables. So this ribbon cable will go in between the PDB, this PDB, and your flight controller. Uh, it'll do several things. It'll power, obviously, your flight controller. It'll tell the flight controller the, the current voltage, VCC, right? It'll tell the flight controller the amp draw, the current amp draw. And the other way around, from the flight controller, all signal wires run through this rhythm cable to the PDB. Now, you don't have to 
connect your ESC signal wires to the PDB but you can and it will probably result in a cleaner setup because uh, over here at the corners you see signal output pads, solder pads and again it's uh, convenient that those are located at the corners of this board but again you don't have to you can also up to uh, solder your signal wire straight to the flight controller now uh, the flight controller I have here, the 722 from Matic again, also has a ribbon connector so there will be no soldering of wires between the PDB and the flight controller which makes for a, a nice and clean setup I think. What you can also see is that this flight controller has a uh, memory card slot, compact flash for uh, black box locking, that's uh, nice. I actually prefer onboard data storage uh, memory. Now if you uh, don't like uh, the use of a ribbon cable or maybe you are using a flight controller that doesn't have a ribbon connector, this PDB also has solder pads over here for all the same functions. So yeah maybe this connector gets damaged at some point you can uh, revert back to simple uh, wire connectors between the two. So that's a nice fallback. And again, maybe your flight controller doesn't even have a ribbon connector. Now, um, what I'll do is, I'll, uh, like I said, I'll uh, solder up this uh, wire and the XC60. I'll also pre-tin all the motor current outputs and the signal outputs. And I'll be running my FPV equipment, so the camera and the VTX, from the 10 volt output of this PDB. I could, yes, I could opt to power both the VTX and the camera straight from the, the battery current. I could, both can handle that. But these blocks, these electronics blocks over here, you see, uh, they, they also filter out noise. So your uh, camera and your VTX will have a cleaner uh, current uh, source. So uh, that should result in a cleaner FEV experience. Okay, now obviously before you install a PDB and a flight controller, you need to uh, plan ahead to see what the orientation of both will be. The base orientation for both of these is with the uh, LiPo connector, this, to be the rear of your quadcopter. Because signal 1 is located over here, which is uh, in Betaflight the standard uh, location of your motor 1, the, the right rear. In my case however, uh, I'll be mounting this PDB facing forward, so this will be the front of our quadcopter. Not only that, I'll also be mounting it upside down to mess things up a little more. <laughs> yeah, so, um, and why? Well, in my frame all electronics are mounted upside down. Um, oh, you can't see that, but uh, yeah, all my electronics are mounted from the top plate down. Um, yeah, uh, that's a minor thing. Uh, also, uh, you need to uh, make sure that you can still uh, reach the USB connector uh, if you want to change settings. Uh, quite convenient, <laughs> right? I'm sure you'd agree. So, um, yeah, that had me uh, uh, go for this solution. And, well, my uh, battery connector will come out from the frame just behind my uh, FPV camera. You'll see that in a couple of minutes. Hartstig day. The quadcopter has a power distribution board and as you can see the power wires run to the front of my quadcopter. Here you see the XC60 which comes uh, out of the frame uh, at the top. This is a quadcopter with the battery mounted at the top. So that should work out just fine. Now I haven't secured it down as you can see. Um, okay so the next thing we'll have to do is um, Solder up the power wires for the ESCs to the corners of the PDB, right, and, and shorten them up, of course. I'll make them as short as possible. 
each ESC obviously also has a signal wire, the white strand over here, which will be soldered to the, the signal uh, pads, which I've also uh, pre tinned as you can hopefully see. And uh, yeah, a lot of ESCs come with a ground for the signal wire as well. Um, I'll just solder those straight up to the, the ground that these, the thicker wire, the power wire will connect to. That'll work out just fine. Okay, what's more? Um, yeah, I've got uh, the 10 volt plus and ground pre tint over here. And uh, this is the wire coming off of my FPV camera. It's got three strands. Uh, the, the yellow one is a signal, so the FPV feed, and a black and a red one, which is obviously power and ground. So that power and ground will be soldered up to these two pads over here. Um, as is uh, the, the wires coming off of my VTX. And I'm not completely sure yet where I'll mount my VTX. Preferably uh, on the stack, so as the, the third layer in my stack. And that might mean um, this frame has side plates, which I've removed now. Um, that might mean that I can't mount those side plates. And I'm not too wary about that. Uh, yeah, those side plates do prevent some, uh, some dirt getting into the frame. But uh, it also uh, limits the height of my stack. Yeah. And I'd really like to be able to run uh, the FEV antenna wire straight from the VTX to the back of the, of the frame. Yeah, uh, those are the challenges in building a quadcopter. Now, by the way, if you are new to building quadcopters and you are overwhelmed by all the things you need to uh, remember, all the things you need to take uh, care of while uh, building a quadcopter, just cut the, the entire process up into small portions. Uh, just like I'm doing here, I've pre-tinned the things I need to solder things to, right? That's an easy thing, um, not, not a, a difficult problem to solve. Then I need to uh, shorten these wires from the ESCs and solder them up to the, the power distribution board. And oh, uh, well, the ESCs probably also need a signal, so I uh, hope you solder that up. Just uh, take it in stages. Cut your project up into small problems, well, problems, challenges, and you'll see that uh, the entire thing suddenly becomes a lot easier. Don't uh, try to solve everything at once. And if you then still are left with problems, just hit me up a comment down below and I'll be happy to uh, help you out. Okay, so I'll uh, go and solder up these power wires and the signal wires from the ESCs off screen and I'll uh, show you what that looks like. There is what that looks like. Uh, one little tip, when you're soldering up these power wires, uh, be sure to uh, leave some room for uh, uh, the, your fastening <laughs> uh, hardware. So the nylon uh, lock nuts or your standoffs. As you can see I've uh, worked all wires around them a little bit. So I can uh, have some room uh, to fasten these plastic uh, bolts over here. I do still have to uh, solder up uh, this wire, the power for my FPV camera and my VTX. I left that uh, undone uh, so you can actually see the PDB like this. Okay, and uh, let's now have a look at our flight controller. Hartje G'day, the Matic F722. So an F7 flight controller. And uh, you might wonder, uh, well, uh, what do you need an F7 flight controller for? Well, basically processing power. See, here is a uh, snapshot of... Uh, my beta flight configuration and can your F4 flight controller do this? Probably not. No, and um, yeah, this, this is a, a pretty high speed, far faster this flight controller than, uh, well, the previous generations. Now the very neat thing about most any Matic product 
is that they document it very well on their website. Here, have a look. Um, this goes for most any Matek flight controller. You will uh, see a uh, wiring diagram on their website for it. So that makes it very easy for you to connect things. Uh, it also makes it very easy for me so because I uh, don't have to explain how to uh, uh, connect up your buzzer, uh, your LED strip, your receiver and such. Okay, so and it comes with two of these ribbon cables to connect the PDB to the flight controller. Uh, one spare, right? It also comes with vibration isolating standoffs, rubber standoffs. Very nice. And yeah, if Matek provides anti-vibration standoffs, uh, that probably means that this flight controller does not <laughs> like vibration, so I'll be sure to use those. And what more can I tell you? Yeah, this, uh, as mentioned before, it has a data storage, so you can install an SD card for your black box logging if you so want to. And that is basically it for now. Uh, if you want me to do more detailed videos uh, about, for instance, connecting up the VTX and uh, your camera, uh, let me know. I'll be building a second one of these quadcopters, so I have, uh, yeah, I can do that uh, for the second quadcopter if you'd like that. For now, if you are left with questions, uh, hit me up a comment down below, of course, and catch you on the next video. Bye bye.